Good morning, I'm Luke. So I'm with the Ethereum Foundation with the Ecosystem Support Program, which as Monet was saying, it's ESP. Um, I won't say Ethereum, I won't say the Ecosystem Support Program again today. Uh, it's just the ESP. So we hope everyone can remember the acronym. Um, yeah, so thank you for coming. Uh, I'm gonna spend some time just, you know, talking a bit about what ESP is, uh, what we do, what we look for, and how you can apply. So, you know, ESP is, if you look at our website, you know, ESP is the public facing allocation arm of the EF. So what we're talking about there is, you know, we're the arm of the EF that provides support to the ecosystem. Could be financial, could be non-financial, um, with the intention of growing the ecosystem and pushing the Ethereum, uh, pushing Ethereum forward, um, you know, to meet uh, the objectives that I think we all see that, that Ethereum could have. Um, you know, we're not, we're, we're not here to kind of say what needs to be solved, certainly not in most cases. Um, we're just here to help guide. And uh, we really like to hear the feedback from, from everyone in, in the ecosystem as to, you know, what are the problems that need to be solved. Um, we might have some ideas, but I'm sure everyone else has ideas as well. And at the end of the day, for Ethereum to meet its objectives, people need to start using it, people need to start solving more problems uh, so we can push it all forward. So what do we support? Um, you know, generally speaking, public goods. You know, we talk a lot about public goods. I think there's, there's often a lot of confusion as to when we say public goods, what are we talking about? Um, you know, generally speaking, what we're talking about is open source, uh, non-commercial, available for everyone to build on, um, you know, and positive some outcomes. You know, and another, way, another way to look at, you know, maybe more specific or maybe more abstract, depending on how you want to think about it, is, you know, public goods, they're non-excludable, they're non-rivalrous, that's the standard definition. Um, user cannot be prevented from accessing them for free, and everyone can use them at the same time. Um, so really, you know, when we're, when we're trying to build out public goods, we're trying to build, we're striving to build positive, positive outcomes. Um, and we need, we need public goods that avoid the destructive scaling of Web2. So that, that's, that's the you know, highest level of when we're evaluating a project, the highest level consideration. Um, yeah, so the, this talk is gonna be, you know, Thor talked this morning about uh, you know, some targeted grant rounds, which, which the EF and the ESP run periodically. I'm not gonna talk about those types of, those types of opportunities specifically. I'm gonna be focusing more on just the, the regular application process and kind of the more, the more general uh, ESP function. So, you know, what are we looking for? You know, th this is like the, 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 general, the general themes of projects we're looking for. You know, there, there's obviously nothing specific in here. It's, it's ideas that fit within this framework. Um, right, so again, what we're looking for is it's at the infrastructure level. We're looking for things that everybody can build upon. And, and, and yeah. So, jumping ahead, the, you know, this is the mental model that I've created for myself um, to help me understand, <laughs> to help me understand where we fit, you know. So I hope this slide confuses you as much as it <laughs> potentially maybe ask, uh, helps you ask some questions as to what types of projects are we looking for. Um, so the, the, the way I look at this is, you know, the, the, the vertical axis here is how, is how important is the development to Ethereum. The horizontal axis is, you know, how capable, you know, how motivated is the ecosystem to, to implement something as well as, as well as how much capacity do they have. And is that, is that funding capacity, is that technical capability, um, you know, it, it, could be, it could be anything in between. Right, so in the, like in the, in the top left, uh, you know, you kind of have like the Ethereum roadmap. Um, 
really core development type of activities and research activities related to related to core development. And you know that that's really those are really areas that I think the EF plays a really strong role in at least signaling signaling activities that need to be done. Um, certainly, it's not all executed by the Ethereum Foundation. It's executed by by uh, members of the core development team, which are within and without side, uh, and outside of the uh, the Ethereum Foundation, as well as uh, you know partners and grantees, and so there's you know hundreds of people that that work work on those types of work on those types of projects. Um, the bottom the bottom right is you know let's say more commercial projects, more projects where there's maybe more financial incentive in order to build an application, or perhaps just purely um, like application level uh, functions, so user facing applications, and areas where you know funding might be fairly easy to come by. Um, so it, it may or may not require as much ESP involvement in helping to steer that. That's just people building businesses on top of the blockchain, which is what we want to see. Everything else in between, so kind of the you know certainly in the in the in the, in the top portion is. I, you know, it's certainly incomplete. Uh, I think if we looked at the entire problem domain, there's probably no blank space on this page at all. Um, but generally speaking, it's, you know, the infrastructure associated with implementing, you know, all the other, all the other capabilities in here. Like when we talk about UX and crypto is bad, what infrastructure is missing in order to enable a, a UX that, that actually makes it, uh, you know, enjoyable to use? Um, you know, how do we... How do we increase censorship resistance? How do we, uh, you know, increase the, you know, uh, negative MEV? How to, or you know, minimize the negative MB, MEV? I should say, uh, you know. So, so again, this is not a, this is not intended to be a, you know, a complete map. It's just something I use to frame myself for when we see applications. It's kind of a, where does it fit? Where does it fit in this space? And is is it something that, you know, we should just be making connections? To other other funding sources within the ecosystem, or is it something that we should be engaging with, or is it, you know, something that, you know, you don't really need our help? And you know, the bottom the bottom left is really just, you know, maybe it's the items that are or topics that are too early to implement. Doesn't mean we don't need to do the research today, but perhaps it's 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 too early to get started. Um, so you know, they'll, they'll trickle up in priority in one direction or another uh, over time. Right, so, you know, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to talk with people, you know, this whole week or any time really, just as to what are the problems that that everyone else sees. Uh, you know, what what do you think the missing infrastructure layers are in order to in build what you want to build, it's, and and that would let everyone else build what they want to build as well. Right. So this is yeah. Again, it's just a mental model I've created to confuse myself and everybody else, but uh, I hope it. I hope it helps at least. See where my head is at. Um, you know, so then we talk about, you know, what do we kind of stay away from, right? So we're not, basically, if the EF is always looking for ways to uniquely support the ecosystem. So if there are opportunities for, you know, VC funding or other funding sources within the ecosystem, we would be more apt to make connections than to support directly, um, right? Projects that are actively raising money um, probably don't require the EF support. If you're, if you're building a new NFT project or a new NFT platform, unless there's some really unique piece of tech in what you're trying to do, again, it's probably not something that, that we support. We do see a lot of applications in that area, um, but it, it's, it's not something that we, we would actively try and support, and certainly token, we don't talk tokens, we don't, and we don't talk about investments, and we don't talk about that type of thing, um, as well as hobby activities. You know, hobby activities are certainly great, they might be beneficial, but they're not the types of things we, that, that we would generally support. If you're trying to start a breakfast club of some kind, it's probably not the right, the right place to, uh, to apply. Um, so I'll get into the different types of support that the ESP provides. You know, I don't know if, if any of you have checked out the ESP website this year versus 
last year we, com we completely revamped the website back in February um, to help streamline the process of applying for support as well as to, as well as to uh, I guess, provide some other options for the types of support that we provide. So the, the first type we have here is office hours. So this was new in 2022. And so office hours gives you the opportunity to submit an application requesting guidance on your project or guidance on how to get involved in a project or just, you know, some, some advice. Uh, you don't have to submit a grant application here. This is just simply, it's a fairly straightforward application. Um, if it's something that, you know, if your project idea is something that appears to be aligned with, with something we, we would like to talk about, uh, then we, we quickly set up a 20 minute phone call with one of our evaluators and, and we go from there. Oftentimes, uh, we, these lead to recommend, you know, recommending a team or an individual to apply for a grant or it might be, you know what, we're gonna connect you with someone else within the EF or someone outside the EF in, in order to move your project forward. Um, you know, I think, I think the last data I was looking at is, we've seen something like 300 applications this year for office hours uh, calls. I think we've held over 100 office hour calls uh, this year, so that's 100 unique teams um, that uh, our team of seven or eight people have been, uh, been talking to this year, just simply providing this type of support. And there's been more than a handful that have, have turned into grant applications or sponsorship applications as well. So next up, so, so office hours is non-financial support. Um, so the first type of financial support we provide is sponsorships for community events. Now these will, these are always, um, educational in nature, I'll say, but they're, you know, they're, they're local events, local organizers, may or may not have an EF presence uh, associated with them. It's just, it's just intended to build out, build out local, local communities. Um, you know, so we, we, we look at things like how aligned are the organizers with Ethereum? What, what types of other projects have, have they supported? Um, how many people are they trying to get involved in their event? It doesn't matter if your event is big or small. I think the, the big or small just determines, you know, how, how much money might be, support, might be required in order to support your event. You don't have to have big name speakers in order to apply for a sponsorship. We just need to know that you have credible community members who are able to, who are able to push the message of Ethereum forward and, and, and help to build those communities. Um, we also look at, you know, why would the EF support? Is it just simply you, you want the money in order to support, the, in order to get the event off the ground? Or is there some other, is there some other aspect that would benefit the local community? Um, and you'll see later on in one of my charts, the, the number of sponsorships that we've awarded in 2022 has been, uh, I think, beyond everyone's expectations as you know, everyone leading, all the, all the community events in Latin America and around the world leading up to leading up to uh, this week, as well as leading up to the merge. Um, it's actually quite impressive when you see how many, how many sponsorships uh, the EF has provided this year. And not even the EF, actually, I'll clarify. The sponsorships that the ESP program has provided this year, so not including sponsorships that other teams within the EF have, have provided as well. And then, and, and to clarify as well, sponsorships are not considered grants. Um, so they're just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lighter weight process for, for uh, providing funding to, to these uh, local communities. The first type of grants, we call them small grants. The name is kind of self-explanatory. Um, they're intended to be small in scope and small in duration. So this would be typically three to six months. They're meant to be kind of, this is the place where, we're, where we are willing to take risks on teams, individuals, new technology, uh, to see what can happen. So this is, you know, you have an idea, early stage, you wanna just try and produce, a, you know, a, a proof of concept or an MVP, and you need a little bit of funding in order to just uh, get, that, get that off the ground and see, see if there is potential there. Um, you know, th this, is the, this is the type of program that, or the, the uh, grant pro uh, process that you would apply through. 
It's a, it's a, we typically t intend to award these within about, I'll say three weeks would be roughly the target from the time you apply to, to the time we agree to, you know, is this something we want to move forward with or not, or want to support or not. Again, oftentimes applications come in here and we actually decide that perhaps EF support is not the best place to get support. So perhaps there's another DAO funding source or perhaps there's some other connections um, that would be that would be better. Um, certainly, there's there's back and forth between between the uh, the ESP team and the applicants to make sure everyone uh, make sure we understand what the proposal is, make sure the team understands kind of what types of constraints there there may or may not be be on uh, you know what scope we would be willing to support. But these again, these are intended to be lightweight, and th this is where we take the risks. Um, And project grants, so this is the last source of, uh, of grants that we and the ESP team provide directly. Um, there's no real cap on funding here. So these are late, later stage projects or later stage research activities that require perhaps a, a more robust source of funding and support. Um, these applications go through a Let's, let's say they might, they might be two months would be roughly the target to, from application to award for, for applications in this area. And it's a very collaborative process trying to figure out, uh, trying to scope the project appropriately, make sure that there's a, 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 an achievable roadmap, make sure there's milestones along the way to, to demonstrate progress or to find places to say, you know what, it's not going to work or, or what have you. Um, and make sure that we're, you know, generally make sure that we're all on the same page. And so again, these are the, the decision make, uh, making process here. Like we go back through talking with advisors within the EF, pulling in advisors from the ecosystem if it's something that, you know, perhaps they're better, better positioned to, uh, to weigh in on as to, you know, is this the right, is there someone else working on this tech? Is there, is there not? Um, you know, and it do, does the solution appear viable? Does the team appear capable? Those, those types of questions as well. So certainly it's a, it's a more intensive process, um, but this is one area there where I think, you know, to be honest, we've, we've started to see a, our pipeline in this area to dry up a little bit. Um, we're not exactly sure why that there's, there isn't a, there aren't people working on those later stage projects. Now, it could just be that everyone's been focused on the merge and focused on projects sort of related in that front and now everyone's trying to figure out, well, what is the next thing to be, to, to actually push forward in, in, in the short term. Um, and in these projects, oh, and sorry, going back to small grants one second. Uh, when I say short duration, it's like three to six months for, for small grants. I'd say project grants are probably six to 12, six to 18 month types of roadmaps that, that we'd be laying out with the teams. Okay, so evaluating grants is, you know, as I've been alluding to, it's, uh, it's a fairly complicated process. Um, we do a lot of due diligence on applications, you know, to make sure that, you know, we ask ourselves a lot of questions. We ask the grantees, probably not as many questions as we ask ourselves, but a lot of questions as well. You know, we're looking at, you know, let's see, if we look at, is this the best use of resources, right? The, the EF has limited resources, the ecosystem has limited, is, is this the best place to, to put the EF's funding to push things forward? Um, we look at the team, is this the best team? is this the best use of that team as well, um, right? If we have highly capable teams solving trivial problems, maybe we'd be better off trying to direct them to help solve a more complicated problem than, than perhaps the one they're more interested in. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be the first time if we had a conversation with a team when they proposed, a, proposed something to us and we actually tried to direct them to work on something else. Um, because we saw what they were trying to do, we've seen what they've done in the past, and we know they're capable of solving a bigger problem than perhaps what, they're, what they were proposing, or perhaps their scope was, 
was too limited. Um, also, perhaps the, the goal of the project was too ambitious. And so then we would try and scale the project down to, well, why don't we just try and find that the proof of concept or the, you know, the minimum viable product to, that needs to get done, prove that we can do that, and then perhaps there's a discussion for, for follow-on funding, or perhaps that brings you to the point where you don't require EF support anymore. Now you've retired the risk to your project and you can move it forward. Um, yeah, and, and then I suppose we look at also the, you know, what are the side effects of the EF supporting? Um, it's always, I'd say this is one of the most difficult considerations that we always have to make, is what are the chilling effects? If we support your proposal and you're the, and you get, you know, it looks like an EF stamp of approval on your, on your solution, does that mean the rest of the ecosystem stops developing on it? Right, so we, need, we, we always need to make those considerations as well. And we also want to make sure that teams are able to have a sustainability plan in their, in their roadmap. Um, it's not always obvious, especially when you're building out public goods. I think that's sort of the definition of public goods. So it's, there's a dichotomy there of how do, you, how do you become sustainable when you're trying to just build the infrastructure? Like how does a consensus client team, for example, become a sustainable business, are they, and, and how, how, do, how do you make, how do you come up with the balance there? So it, it, it's a consideration, it's, it's a tougher one for us to, to totally understand, but what we, what we try to avoid is having teams that are clearly going to be dependent on us for the next several years because there, there is no way to monetize ever what they're trying to do. Um, uh, we also try to avoid, we, we call it king making. So it's sort of like the, the chilling effect. We put your stamp on your project, and now it looks like the EF endorses that project, and no one else should work on that project. It's just, you know, we'll put our stamp on your wallet, and there you go. We don't need any other wallets because now we have the EF endorsed wallet. So we, we avoid, the, avoid those situations as, as much as possible. Uh, we also try to avoid, we don't want to enable bad actors. Obviously, I think that's a no-brainer. Um, right, so, so that gets into getting to know the teams, getting to know their intentions, getting to know other projects they've worked on. Um, not obviously, we, we don't do background checks or anything like that, but it's certainly talking to people that, that the team knows, everyone, everyone, typically, you know, the applying for ESP support, you don't need to know anybody to apply. Um, it's an open door, anybody can apply. But certainly people that are active in the ecosystem, um, have probably been engaged with other, other organizations that, that we're familiar with. And if, if, there's a, if there's sort of a reference we can look at to help validate, then you know, that's, that helps make things easier as well. We also try to avoid creating our own competition. And again, that's one that we, we shouldn't have to say, but we do see a lot of applications about, I'm trying to build applications on Algorand, or I'm trying to build a new L1 altogether you know, can you, can you please support my project? Um, so clearly, you know, those ones are obvious, obvious rejections. Um, in most cases, you know, it certainly when you talk about building competition, obvious rejection, but sometimes there's a unique idea in there as well, right? So the, we're, we're always looking for, this was one other thing we put in there is, we see your proposal, we see your project, what's the really unique piece of tech that you're trying to build that is actually beneficial, that we think and we, uh, we would agree on is beneficial to uh, Ethereum, right? So sometimes you'll see a team submit a, a project proposal that actually gets scope, you know, requesting hundreds of thousands of dollars that gets scoped down into, you know, $30,000 because that's really, there was really just that one key nugget of tech that they, that was important to build. The rest of it was just an application layer on top. Right. So the general general process when you submit an application um, through the website, say that is, you know, you'll hear from us very quickly, and probably within within two weeks we'll be trying to schedule a call to have that have that first level of engagement and make sure we're all on the same page with what the application is and what the next steps are. Um, you know, one thing that's, 
suppose one thing that's not on this slide would be, you know, obviously, if we keep extending the line out, you're going to get to, you know, if it's small grants, maybe it's just another, another week or two to make a decision. If it's project grants, there's a, a whole bunch of other gates in there. Once we award a grant, there is a formal legal agreement that's put in place between the EF and the, and the team. Um, it's, not just a, it's not just a handshake agreement. So there is, you know, we need to do KYC checks on teams uh, and individuals. We need to make sure that we have, uh, that we're onboarding you onto the, onto the, uh, into the program. And so, so there is some process involved in that. Sometimes teams get confused with, and, and it's not unexpected. So it's just, you know, oh, it's awarded. Where's my funds? Well, and sometimes it can, take, it can take three weeks. It can take six weeks, depending on how, how long it takes to get that uh, legal agreement signed at the, at the end of the process. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've what we've been up to um, so I won't I won't go into too much here but I just wanted to kind of show you like this is the number of applications we've been receiving per quarter since uh, early 2020 um, and you can see a huge spike in 2022 now I don't know if that's all completely related to the website redesign I don't know if that's something to do with market conditions. I don't know if that's something to do with the maturity of Ethereum today versus where it was um, in 2021. And you can see, you know, the yellow one, office hours. So you can see lots of office hours support and it's been picking up as the year goes on. You can see small grants, um, lots of small grants applications. Right, and, and you know, quite a few, quite a few uh, sponsorship applications there as well. And the next slide is actually when we convert that into awards. Um, right, and here, what, what I actually found, what I actually found quite interesting here was, although the number of applications you know, especially if you ignore, so this is financial awards, so we don't, when we're talking office hours, we don't award uh, office hours in our system, so that's why you, you won't see office hours on here. Um, but when we look at the awards, we actually don't see the same increase. So we're, act we're, we're seeing tons of applications. I'd say it's like, uh, if we ignore the office hours, we're seeing 50% increase in applications, if not more. But the awards, it, it, you know, if we exclude the sponsorships in Q3, which was all the uh, events leading up to the merge and leading up to leading up to DevCon, where even just I think uh, in Q3 we awarded about 63 sponsorships uh, for merge meetups, um, right? So that's why that's so big. So this is actually getting to the sort of the crux of the problem or the crux of the question, which is you know, how do we get better applications? How do we get everybody here, everybody working in Ethereum, if you have, when, when you're applying for, for uh, ESP support, having applications that are more aligned? I think this works out to about a 10, maybe 15% conversion rate, which maybe is not unrealistic, and maybe, that's, maybe that is the way it should be. Um, but certainly what we would really like to see is, you know, fewer applications related to my new NFT project, more applications related to, related to helping build out infrastructure and doing research that actually drives Ethereum uh, to, to be able to achieve its goals. This, so this slide is, it's basically the same slide as the last one, um, except instead of broken down by, by the type, it's broken down by the category, right? So you can just see the, the variety of categories. And we've, we've started to try and increase the granularity of the categories that, uh, that we're, we're trying to, I guess, classify the applications or the awards within. Um, but yeah, certainly you can see huge spike in community events. And, but again, it just stands out to me that that the level's not increasing, even though the volume of applications is increasing. So the team is, the team is now you know, screening 
hundreds of applications a quarter, or a few hundred applications a quarter, where they used to be screening 120 applications a quarter, um, and trying to find the trying to find the good projects in there, the good teams uh, is, I guess, increasingly difficult because it just starts to it just start it, it can easily get lost in the noise um, at various times. So I won't go into too much on these, so this is just the last uh, few set of slides. So periodically, uh, the ESP does run targeted grant rounds. We do certainly support the other teams, all of the other teams at the EF when they're, when they're awarding grants or when they're running grant rounds. So Thor was talking about his rounds this morning, um, or his grants this morning. And, you know, so for, for example, we had a academic grant round um, earlier in the year. Um, the response was far surpassed our expectations. We ended up having to double the, the budget uh, for awards from what we were originally initiating or, or expecting. So we ended up awarding 39 grants for $2 million to uh, researchers, academics, interns, PhD students, um, that kind of thing. And there's gonna be another academic round coming, we haven't announced anything yet, but probably January, February of next year, I think is, is the current plan. Um, so if you know any researchers, or then please pay attention to our blogs for that. Danny was talking about this one yesterday, the, the merge data challenge. So, you know, this one closes at the end of the month. So, again, you can uh, look that one up and apply. We have the semaphore grants round that, that again, Thor was talking about this morning. Um, it's uh, wrapping up in, in a few weeks as well. So again, please apply. And I think that mostly wraps up uh, my presentation. So you know, please stay in touch. We do have a booth for the entire week. So you can come and find us. There will be someone from the ESP team there for, you know, all the time. There's people out there helping us support it today while, the, while our team is in here. Um, but yeah, come by, ask any questions you have. If you want to just stop us while we're here, stop me in the hall, doesn't matter. Um, ask some questions, we'd love to talk because, you know, we're not, I think I might have said this earlier, we're not here to tell anybody what needs, what we want to see in an app, what we want to see a, people applying for. We actually want to hear from you as to what you want to apply for. So we have general themes, but you know the problems that need to be solved. You're the boots on the ground trying to get these things done, get the technology pushed forward, and if there's any help that we can provide, then by all means, please ask. We might have time for one or two questions, and then we're going to have our Web3 is great panel. So does anyone have a quick question? I'll come down with another mic. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we are going to look further into it because we really need a lot of help with our project. I just have a, a question. So uh, in one of the slides, you, uh, you said that you stay away from public funding rounds. So my question is, if we took part to Gitcoin grants funding rounds, are we still eligible for um, a grant from the S uh, S S ESB? Well, so I, th I think we'd have to look at the specifics. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's that's maybe a little bit different, right? A Gitcoin, a Gitcoin funding round. Gitcoin is funding public goods activities as well. So I think that would be that'd be something that um, we would want to look at, perhaps. So it's not it's not an out right now. I'd say if you're if you're issuing tokens, if you have active VC rounds that that, that you're looking at, then those ones are kind of off the table. But uh, yeah, there might there might be extra considerations depending on the project and and what the impact of that project is intending to be. Thank you. Um, hello, my name's Sunny. I'm wondering what kind of grant opportunities do you have for inclusion and diversity initiatives in the space? Any opportunity that you want to propose? <laughs> I think would be would be my response. I think that it we have run certainly sponsorships. We have explicitly sponsored events where that's the focus. Um, Right, whether it's whether it's um, 
you know, just trying to get more women into the group or whether it's trying to find other, under other underserved communities um, to get into, to get into Ethereum and to help educate in, in those areas. So yeah, so it's certainly, I can't say what, there's, there's no specific opportunity. We're open to all, to all suggestions and all proposals. Okay, thank you. Yeah.